And you know, the thing is, you're happy, but you're never content. We know we can go quicker. Like on, on something like this, how much, how much boost are you guys gonna try to? Upwards of 100 pounds in nitrous. We've got a precision 110 on it. You're gonna be 3,000 plus horsepower. Uh, exclusive here, TRC exclusive, right? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, no one's seen, no one has seen this yet. You're I the first to see it. Go. What's up guys, Javier from the Air Racing Channel. Back for another feature down under in Sydney, Australia. Behind me, we have Croydon Race Velvets, AKA CRD. This is one of the leading performance shops in Sydney. They're well known for their R32 GTR, Q2. We're gonna check out some of the street cars, we're gonna check out the new race car, and some of the new things that they're developing for the RV platform. Let's get into it. Omar, what's up, brother? How are you, mate? It's How good going? to see you, man. You too. We were, uh, just a couple days ago, we were out at CUDA, and you guys were out there having fun with all these RBs. <laughs> And now we're we're touring the shop, man. You guys have quite the facility here, brother. Yeah, there's a lot going on here at the moment. A lot going on. I mean, yeah. look at the look at the sea of G GTRs there, man. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, what, walk us through what you guys got going on. No worries. Let's go. So this is the street side dailies projects. So I think this is the car here. That's the car there that you will be going in a little later. So this is it. Billet block, 3.2 liter, 8385 precision turbo on it. So this this here, right? So I'll show you guys yep. here. This here is like a, a pretty well dialed like street setup here. Correct. Right? Yes, it is. This With is some of the Glenn's external oil pump. Um, single, yeah, still a wet sum. So this was the old setup out of Dave's, obviously, the other car, which Dave ran the 8.1 with it, with the manual. Factory wheels, yeah, it's just, it's still on low boost this, because the owner's never driven anything like this. So cons give it to him on gate pressure. I think it's probably a little bit more than gate pressure now. It's on about 25, 26 pound. So just to get him, get used to it. So we got some Mickey Thompson. What is this like, ET yeah. Street or something? ET Street SS is on there, but at the moment. That's um, what, uh, that's what I run in my car yeah. back home. That's it, so we'll see where they, the limit is and we'll go smaller wheels and bigger tires a little later. So I'm yeah. sure he wants to race a later, he wants to cage it and stuff, so. Oh yeah. But he wants to do some street stuff first. Interior is pretty stock apart from it's got a 12 inch Motec dash, it's got the Samsonis, five speed sequential, that's, yeah. That uh, seems to be, just seems to be the trend with you yeah. guys, right? Everything that you guys are doing is a pretty good example of any platform, you know, like, it is, yeah. I mean, we got 34s, we got R35s, we got Evos, and I think this might be the one that I rode in at CUDA. That's it. And this was, this was a dream. This thing, I, I hadn't ridden many Evos that remind, uh, you know, remind me of the RTRC Evo, yeah. the sequential car. Uh, I think this is this is Rob's pride and joy. That's Rob's is daily, pretty much. Also calls it his daily. Yeah, it runs yeah. so mint, man. It's like 7685. I couldn't believe how well it drove on that turbo. Yeah. You know, like that actually you guys, really you guys nice. honestly put so much pride into all of your builds, and I, I absolutely love that. I, I, I've seen that as in general as like an Aussie thing. You know, like yeah. Everybody puts a lot of pride into it in the motorsports and it's, all that. Comes out to our customers as well. They're all sort of take a lot of pride in their their vehicles so and then you know they want out to each other as well so they see that they want that they want better sure. so you're always sort of stepping it up each time so every time it's you a, build the next one you do you know you gotta step it up it's this a slippery time slope ready, so. right it is it is <laughs> bottomless pit as well we all know <laughs> exactly
is good. <laughs> this thing is good. That's fun. How is it driving on the other side of the road? It's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I really like this transmission. Yeah? Oh, it's my favorite. It's nice, bro. surprised how well it does on this turbo at that boost you know yeah. like this is like just cruising like yeah. perfect street mode you know yeah. doesn't want to kill you you know dude my <laughs> man thank you that was my first uh aussie gtr experience driving driving a gtr in australia yeah thank you can't thank you enough brother <laughs> thank you thanks man <laughs> So good to see you. Yeah, yeah, away, man. Thanks for having us. No, thanks for coming, man. Before we left, I ha had to come see this. It's called Zeus, if I'm Zeus. not mistaken. Yep. Well, we decided um, a couple of years ago that we've pretty much gone to the limits of Jun Tzu. It's um, been my streeter and um, the quickest GDO in the world by none. So we've developed that engine package and been driving that now for a while. We thought, okay, where to from here? Because we're still developing the engine package and we know we can get a lot more out of it. And the only way to go forward is, you know, to build a pro mod that we can show off what we're really made of. You know, and at least with this, we can take on the world stage, you know, for full door. Uh, pro mods and we hooked up with the guys at SCF race cars sat down started planning and um, and this is the finished article Craig's one of the best chassis builders in Australia and um, we sort of nutted out a pathway that we know that we can run a mid five in this chassis it's just a matter of now of power delivery obviously engine combo and you know and the setup You guys recently got it like painted and everything and mm -hmm. airbrushed yeah Air, right? airbrushed yeah, yeah you guys recently right. got it airbrushed and yeah. it's it's immaculate it came out so good we started with a body and it was great but we thought okay for where we wanted to be and obviously the you know how far we want to push the car there was a few changes we needed to make so we decided to build our own mold um we went to a friend of ours in melbourne um top stage he developed a mold at 115 inch obviously big enough to take off to take the biggest wheel and tie combo that we want in the regards um just the little perks that we really had even the, the way the car sits the rake the way we, we wanted it to obviously similar to all the big pro mods and and how they run them obviously still running the six cylinder import platform type um, racing that we want to do. Part of where we ended up is obviously a full carbon design body and when we saw it we were blown away we thought nah man we can't paint this you know so we just clear coated it airbrushed it. It's a traditional R35 shape anyway so it wasn't too hard to make it look really cool you know? and being that we're true to Nissan and the RB uh, platform it was only right that we ended up either with a shape which is a, th a 32 or a 35 which is the m most modern GDR that's around and yeah this is where we ended up we're very happy with it and we've sort of thrown everything out of anything that is the latest in technology in drag racing. I think we have it here. Now it's a matter of, you know, like making sure that it all works well. Even, even the race tech seat, obviously from a safety perspective, the extra bar work that we've done, the stability side of it, you know, I think, um, I, I think, I think it'll be okay. It's just a matter of, you know, getting out there and shake it down and see what it does. Amazing. I can't wait to see this thing at a uh, World Cup Finals, I hear. Yeah, man, no, 100%, <laughs> yeah. We're going to bring it to the States. Did, um, we just, if, did we just spill the news here? Yeah, that's it. Look, <laughs> if not this year, next year for sure. Let's just get it out there, see what it does, and the quicker we can get it to the States, the better. Yeah. You know, love like, it, yeah, we, we, we'd love to race there. Well, uh, let's go uh, peek over at, at June here, and that's, yeah. the, that's the OG, you know? It is, it is. At the moment, um, the engine's out because we're just waiting for a billet sump to come through from Herman. Herman's done a lot of um, a PRP, has done a lot of development on some parts that we've used on the Pro Mod. We kept breaking the front drive shaft in this, you know, at the 11,500 RPM that we spin the engine to. The prop shaft gets out of balance and it breaks everything. So we decided to develop a billet sump. Hopefully it's a lot stronger and it can cop the, the load that we throw at it. The first thing I noticed just kind of walking around this car is it's got a nice little, nice little wider look here. Mm -hmm. than the <laughs> yep. So it's got our own custom wide body carbon front and rear. I don't know how well you'll be able to see it on camera, but you can see it's like, yeah. you know, 
Yeah, you got comes, the comes out over here. The, the, yeah, yeah. Two seven five, twelve inch rims. Was that a was that a big jump for this car to do that and get that tire on it, it was, and, the, and the bigger it was, wheel and yeah, all that? Yeah. Especially to make it look like it's a traditional R thirty two. Like sure. we still got the standard wing. Yeah. You know, we still have we don't have bonnet pins on it. If you looked at it from afar, yeah. you'd think, yeah, you know, this is just, just a, another R thirty two. I'll tell you, everybody's mind everybody's mind was blown in the states when they saw this car do what it did yeah and then you just you know you kind of just look at it and you go kind of hurts your brain for a second you know like, like <laughs> it shouldn't be doing what it's doing what, what what did we just see like oh man i mean just look at this right it just looks like an r32 you know so we've closed off all the air ducts at the front just obviously for you know the, the mile now that we run so what was the the quickest and fastest uh time so we've run a 637 at 224 mile an hour The thing is, you're happy, but you're never content. We know we can go quicker. <laughs> we, we, we know we've got the, the power to boot and like there's heaps more we can throw at it. But the problem is, we can't get the power in quick enough you know, with this chassis. It just twists and carries on and breaks shit, so. This poor chassis has been holding on for dear life. I don't even want to show you underneath because you'll get scared. <laughs> it's all buckled and mangled and twisted, yeah. Yep. But it's been to the start line more than 2,000 times as well. We've been racing this now for nearly 20 years. And just seeing it develop through the years, I mean, I've watched this car almost since the beginning mm. and uh, it's so cool to be here and seeing it in person. So yeah, really, it started, really life, appreciate you started life with a manual. And so well, I think yeah, one yeah. of the quickest. I, I know a guy that might have some footage of this car over the last two decades. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you do. Where, where did you watch this car again, Javier? Uh, motive DVD. <laughs> then, yeah, that's how far back. Motive DVD. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think we were, uh, it went 10 0 at Kudam under our it first did, GDI at, at the first one, yeah. And we all thought that was Brian amazing. Tires that all the way down. You know, it's, it's been a long path, it's, it's been great, you know, I've enjoyed it. We've had our highs and lows, you know, like everything in drag racing, but we're committed to the to the scene. And obviously what we develop here sets the scene for everything else that happens in the shop and the you know, customers' cars and all the rest of it. And, yeah. you know, it makes everyone happy. Yep. So obviously the, this, this setup's going to be changing here soon. Um, what was the setup when it did the record? It's our RB30 billet block with um, custom JHH race head that we've developed with um, the guys there. 24 injector ID 2600, ProMod uh, 110 V-band. That's a massive turbo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So the, the, the stroker kit, the 3.2 is a wide journal, um, you know, custom job and it holds up very well. You know, we don't really have any bearing issues. We don't have any strength issues in the, in, in the crank. If anything, it could cop another thousand horsepower, wow. you know. So, so, so it's just a matter of us feeding the power in, pushing it harder. We've got a bigger turbo on uh, the ProMod. That's a 110, 114. This is a, just a 110, 108. So we're going to be able to get another 20 pounds of boost, hopefully, out of it and just see what it does at that level. So you were probably running, what, 80 plus pounds of boost on, on this thing? When we ran the 637, Okay, it didn't have the water to air yet. It had a um, air to air intercooler. We ran, I think, 90 pounds plus a load of nitrous. Yeah, we, we, we were using the nitrous to cool the intakes down. Look, we, we, it's, it's hard to gauge. You can't really do a horsepower reading, you know, but, but yeah, look, it loves the nitrous, you know, it works well with it. We know we can throw a load more nitrous, you know, and that, that platform can take it. So from the get go, off the launch bank all the way down, we're going to be feeding more and more nitrous in as we go. It's going to be a good ride and hopefully it's going to be stable and do the job for us. So now we've gone um, water to air and we have backed up a 649, I think, without nitrous. And we ran 637 with nitrous. So we think there's a 62 in the car if we can get the front end to stay down and we can get it all together and make it work. So uh, we, we've seen this car many times just pointing straight at the yeah, sky. That's what it does. <laughs> that's, that's what it's, what it's known it, for, it's, right? The wheelbase is short, yep. it's stock. Power delivery is the challenge because it's on a 275, but it hooks up hard enough where it does throw the front end up. And the chassis is still stock. We don't even have any connectors in there. There's nothing in the chassis that's different to any other R32 that rolls off the factory floor. So, and that's why it's sort of battered a bit because it does bend and carry on. It really does need to be stiffened. We're still running the standard um, engine mounts. We're not even running like mid plates and front engine plates. And so, really? yeah. Look, some of the guys overseas, the Supras and White Rice and all those cars, I mean, they've got not full chassis cars, but they've got tube cars to a point, you know what I mean? And, um, and that's what you need at that level. We're happy that we've achieved what we have and it's been a hairy ride on the way, but you know, it's, we know it's got a lot of potential.
This car here is JJ's. It's a, you guys call it 240Z, we call it a 200SX here. So this here, we pretty much started from ground up. It was, the old setup was a RB is in it as well. Um, he had a sequential Samsonis in it. It was a 2.8 litre um, stroker kit in it. So he raced that for a bit. He ran an 880 with it, with the manual. And then we put a slightly larger turbo on it, went a bigger setup on it, but then it split a ball. So that's when he sort of made the call, all right, let's go build a block. The spicy Three stuff. Yeah. So. Oh man. And, and these are these are so much lighter than like the, the 32. Yeah, there's a big difference from these to the... This thing, this thing's gonna be rowdy, man. Yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be fun. So this one here, we're aiming for around the 2000 horsepower mark. Not only... 2000 horsepower big power stuff but i mean honestly i don't even think the camera is going to do this thing justice but this is probably one of the cleanest 240s yeah. i've this ever seen this car is pretty wild the, the the customer is very anal it's got to look really good but also it's got to go fast uh, ppf the whole car wrap the whole car just to protect it as much as you can but i mean literally under vehicle inside vehicle everything's been restored and should like we uh, throw it up in the air and check out yeah. under it because let's go because I, I took a peek earlier and yeah um it's it's nice it's good <laughs> yeah, man it's let's pretty, let's get it up in the air and show the people what size turbo you said that was again it's a 98 millimeter pro mod you guys don't mess around with your turbos <laughs> everything's got a pro mod on it yeah. at this point and they're like you're like yeah full street car <laughs> exactly. so where do we start under here because it looks like just about every nut and bolt has been <laughs> yes, changed on this car so like even to like the like the you look at the fender yeah. like Oh my god. It's, it's every nut, bolt, clip, a mold on it is all brand new OEM stuff. So subframes coated, it's dry sumped as well. Brand new lines, fittings. It's got a turbo 400 in it, which we've converted to. It's got an 8.8 .8 inch rear diff in it to hold the power. So, but the whole underbody has been redone on it. I mean, look at this. This is just like pinnacle. <laughs> look at this, man. It's so good. Yeah, he's, um, he's pretty particular with what he wants. It's a neat deal here. That's a, like a boost bleed off we use for it. Secrets. Different ways of controlling this. We're getting all the secrets. <laughs> well, I cannot wait to see this thing done. Say probably in the next week or two, the car should be fired up and ready to go, so. <laughs> What else do we got? We, we, I mean, I see, I see a lot of infamous cars on the internet here. Like, like, I mean, we got like, I think that's War GTR. War we got GTR Goat, there. Thor. I mean, where do you start? All right, so everybody definitely knows this car. Yep, the infamous War GTR. <laughs> What's the deal with it now? Is a uh, different owner now, or yeah, different owner. So Adrian LMCT um, bought it off Anthony. Then he got it raffled off. He bought it originally to raffle it off. He raffled it off, and then he just couldn't let it go. So he's bought it back off the person <laughs> who, that won it. He bought it back off him, and yeah, he said, "Let's let's go harder on I, it." I can tell why. I know why he did it. Yeah, right. Exactly. I know. I know why. Because just look yep. at it. It's perfect. <laughs> yeah, it's a beautiful car. It's a V-Spec 2, so, and it's a wild car, so. So it's, it's a V-Spec 2. V-Spec 2. Is this factory paint? Like, factory so, paint. So is that why it looks this way? Because I've, I've seen a couple white uh, R34s, yep. and it, the, the paint looks different on this That's one. That's right. That, there's that a few different colors. Some of them are straight white. This one is a pearl white. Yeah. So yeah. there's two different, but yeah, it's a genuine, um, obviously I think the bump bar's been painted before and stuff like that, but yeah, it's original color. Awesome. Mainly awesome. original. Engine bay's obviously been painted before, but so it's the same motor was when Anthony had it, a 3.2 billet block um, with our full race head. Um, cold side is still the same. We've just gone to a ProMod 88 with titanium dump pipe, titanium exhaust. He's gone to a Samsonis RS90, but we're going paddle shift on this one. And it's got also got, we've gone 8.8 .8 inch rear diff. So Anthony's problem before was just breaking diff every couple passes, trying to get that number down. But yeah, so uh, now it's got sort of a bit dry sumped as well. So it's awesome. What's what's the what's the next thing we'll see this car at? GDR okay. Festival will be there. Uh, this is Go32, um, R32 GDR. It's the quickest manual GDR in the world. It's around a 790 at 188 mile now at the track. Um, now it's got a 8.8 .8 inch diff in it. It's got a bigger diff in it to handle the power. So yeah, combo's still the same as when around the 790. It's just anything with those changes got a different plenum on it now. I rode in this car uh, at Cuda. Boy, I should have brought my diapers for that one. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh it's a wild car man it's pretty brutal to drive when that boost comes in yeah it comes in wild, man. it comes in when it's on it hits like a hammer um oh, no nah, she's oh. pretty cool um it's again it's a very neat car he's really particular with how he wants things done and everything and he's very neat and like same things similar to jj everything's gotta be new you mind if i take a look inside yeah of course so this is a i've got to see a lot of the uh 32s here and this has got to be one of my favorite interiors i would say 
yeah. uh, for a 32, how it's just all redone and it's so clean. Yeah, so it's actually still a wet sump, this car as well. So it's built a block with an external oil pump, but it's still the same wet sump it was with an yeah, external awesome. oil pickup. So with a bit of block, you want a bit more oil pressure. So that's what we've gone for the external oil pump, but kept awesome. it with a wet sump. And then, so this one's pretty much, uh, it's oh, they're almost twins, right? Yes. Uh, but it's got a, a automatic, right? Yes, this has a turbo 400. He's got an automatic. Similar, almost identical motors are identical. Um, different plenums and just different size turbo. This has a 94 millimeter pro mod on it. Okay. So, yeah, a little bit more forgiving with the automatic, I guess. Right? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Especially um, to get things with the power delivery. Yep. So with the manuals, it's either on or off. There's nothing there. <laughs> Whereas with the auto, you have a converter to soak up a bit of the violentness. So it's good. We have, we'll have to play the clip. I think um, Romeo, one of our guys, uh, rode in this at Kuda, yeah. and he said it was a yeah, wild ride. Yeah, so Evo, Evo, I saw the Sekuda. He was he was ripping it. Yeah, I, I think is, you guys uh, recently recently finished that one, right? Correct. Yeah, this is Pete's Evo 10, which we just finished up now. It'll make about a thousand once uh, we've dialed it all in. Sequential, right? Uh, yeah, sequential. It's got a PPG sequential in it. It's a 2.2 liter stroker in it. Sleeve block, Magnus manifold, dry sump. So oh, it's wow. got all it's got all the good gear in I've it. Learned you guys are either all or nothing, huh? <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> Pretty much, I we've got the it. customers who like to go the full way, yeah, so. No, I love it, that's, nah, it seems like to be the, the Aussie way, is like, yeah. you're gonna do it right or you're yep. not doing it. <laughs> exactly, so it's actually really talky as well, this car. It's very promising. So this is a, this is a, an Aussie mobile, it's a VL or something? This or? is an Aussie car, this is a Holden Commodore, it's a VL. Um, they come standard with RB30s in them. So RB30s have got the single cam in them. Very similar to the RB26 obviously, except the twin cam 2.6. This is a three liter single cam. So it's currently the, qu uh, the quickest v uh, quickest single cam VL in Australia. Oh, no way. Um, he's running a 690 at a 199 model now, roughly. Wow. So <laughs> this thing goes sixes? Like l looking back here, I'm like, oh, you know, it looks, yeah, it looks fairly, Tame, you know, like if you change if you change the tires, wheels and tires, yeah. I'd be like, oh, it's a Sunday yeah, exactly. cruiser. And considering that's on a two five five, we ran the six ninety as well, so it's wow. two five five radial. So. Yeah. Wow, dude, this is sick. Two fifty five radial. So aims now. We're going a twin cam head on it now. PRP goodies. Yep. So we're putting a new setup in it now. We're going twin cam head with an RB thirty with three point two liter. Pretty much the identical combo as what we've got in June at the moment. Nice. That's what's so, going to go in it. So. so what's the goal? Some mid sixes or something? Deep into the sixes. Man. As deep as we can go. <laughs> so, so what does something like this weigh compared to like June or something? Are they are they lighter? Uh, we're around the 1,200-ish okay. kilos. So that's um, what, whereas 20, compared to a 1,450, 2,700 pounds or something? Or yeah, I, I, something I like know. that. So not only do we have some drag builds, right? Yep. You guys had street builds in the other room here. Yeah, we've got street cars, right. drag cars, and circuit. these are circuit as well. So we do do it all. This is Rob's Evo 10. Yeah, circuit car is bought recently, which we just finished off. We got, to, got it to us probably three quarters finished. We just had to finish a few lines of fittings and some wiring on it. Oh, this looks fun. Yeah, he drove once at Eastern Creek for I think it was a half day uh, test, which he's never driven a circuit car before in his life. And then from there, we went straight to Bathurst, which is one of our big circuit wow. tracks here, a very big wild track. That's and awesome. he took her there and yeah, he fell in love. He absolutely loved it because it's the funnest car I've ever driven. So this one's catching my eye back here. Yeah, this is Drew's R34. Probably a little more looks like a time attack car, but he does laps, so it's not just all out time attack, um, straight power. So we've built it to be obviously reliable for him. So he can do a lot of laps at a lot of places, but he still enters well time attack and does all that sort of stuff. A lot of carbon, a well. lot of aero, a lot of yeah. downforce, right? It's got, yeah, it's got a bit of everything. It's got power. It's got an RB, it's a 2.8 liter. RB, liter. Yeah, original obviously RB26, but a 2.8 liter stroker in it. Well, you know, you don't need all the horsepower in the world to do nah. the, the, you know, the circuit stuff, right? No. Nah. But uh, even, I mean, I imagine something like this still makes what, six or 700 horsepower or something like that? Or? Yeah, this one here, yeah, about seven, 800 horsepower. Seven, eight hundred yeah. horsepower. Seven so this horsepower. this thing's an absolute animal. I mean, this thing's a rocket ship, I bet, around a circuit. For something to do lap after lap, yeah, it definitely is. I'll have to uh, see if you guys have any, any video. <laughs> be pretty reliable on like the circuit setting uh yeah. what, what does it take is it a dry sump deal or you know what, what do you guys do oiling is the most important thing obviously with the rb so obviously the stroker kit's good it's got a liter 2.8 liter in it um it's got all the strength in it oiling's the main thing dry sump as long as the oil pressure's there and she's good 
Yeah. We'll do lap after lap. We go. It's got an Albans uh, paddle shift in it. So Albans all drive paddle shift. So yeah, it's still all wheel drive. Some people obviously go real drive with their cars when they go circuit, right. but this is still all wheel drive. Oh so man, this is this thing. is probably a dream to drive yeah. around a circuit. I can imagine. But this is yeah, this is a serious serious deal here. Uh, the circuit stuff is a is a whole other world. You know, it is. It, it takes a lot obviously to drag race at, at these levels, but that's the right. circuit stuff. I mean, that's circuit. You need it to survive for lap after lap for minutes, not seconds. Exactly. So. Obviously, different forces. You got sideways forces compared to you know you're taking off off the launch. Most people, it's a it's obviously a, a full time deal to run a just like a, a drag specific shop or a street car specific shop. That's and, right, yeah. And a circuit shop. You guys are doing all of them. Uh, like probably thirty cars out there. I think waiting yeah. waiting to be worked on too. <laughs> That's right. So we've got quite a few cars. Obviously, there's a lot of them waiting on parts or vice versa, yeah. waiting to be worked on, waiting for to be finishing off tunes or vice or stuff like that. So, so you guys are staying busy. <laughs> Keeping busy, mate. Keeping busy. Love to see it, man. Love to see it. Thank you. So up here, obviously, we've got the engine room. Full climate-controlled room. Doesn't turn off. It's on 24-7. I'm going to have to put my sunglasses in here. There's so much... So much billet everywhere. Yeah, there's a bit, <laughs> bit of billet going on at the moment. See, we got the special one here. This yeah. is for a... This is, this is for a the project, huh? first of many motors which will end up going in Zeus. That's the first one. I've got the second one there ready to start assembling. It's pretty much a tried proven engine package which we're running Jun. We're now putting it in a, a proper chassis. The only thing different really with this is we're running with a PRP trigger kit as well as the new billet sump with the integrated daily pump on it. It's a Nitto 3.2 litre, which we've been working with Nitto extensively for a long time to make sure we get a uh, rotating assembly that handles what we want to throw at it. And it's been faultless. Um, everything Nitto has done over the years for us has been unbelievable and second to none, that's all we use. The engine package is something we've developed with JHH. Again, something which we've been sort of slowly tinkering with and evolving to get it where we want it. And it's well and truly proven man it's got 224 mile an hour in june which the chassis is nowhere near where that car needs to be so um there's promise inside with this combo so something like this i mean this is like your bad boy race motor head work i mean what, what does that look like is uh it's cnc seeing it? full cnc ported head it's gone dry deck obviously camshaft combo that we feel we need arrow buckets all the usual bits and pieces. So custom valve springs, custom valves. Yeah, there's not much off the shelf in this motor other than really the stroker kit, to be honest. So like on, on something like this, how much how much boost are you guys gonna try to put? Up, it? Upwards of 100 pounds. Really? Upwards of 100 pounds in nitrous. What turbo do you uh, We've got a precision 110 on it, but we're looking, we've got, already got a few sort of plans to go bigger than that as well. So uh, if the 110 can't give us what we need, then We've got some backup plans ready to go. That's uh, that's moving a lot of air. Yeah, yeah no, definitely, <laughs> a, lot of, definitely a lot of air. Definitely a lot of air. What, what are your? I mean, I guess what are your goals for? Uh, what do you think this thing's going to be horsepower wise? Uh, you had to guess, obviously. Man, honestly, we don't chase too much on the dyno. What it does, we sort of look at mile an hour. For me, something like this, this combo, you're going to be three thousand plus horsepower. It needs to make that. It, no if or buts about it, so it needs to make three, three and a half. We'll really have to be up there with the two J's, you know, running 260 plus mile an hour. So if it doesn't do that, then we've got to put more boost into it and see what we can do to make that happen. So this is a billet block uh, 3.2 litre, which is going in a R34 GDR. This one will be getting a Promod Turbo. It's got a Nitto 3.2 rotating assembly. Yeah, this setup will be good for around the 2,000 horsepower mark. So really the main limiting factor is the Conrods. So when you get over that, you really want to start going towards alloy rods. This is a wet deck block as well. So street use, we try to stick with a wet deck block. You get obviously better water flow into the head, uh, better cooling properties, keeps your combustion chamber nice and cool. It's less clutter, you know, adding extra hose and that as well so you can run a dry deck on the street we have done that as well most of them stick with a wet deck would you recommend something like this for like a full street car yeah yeah of course uh they've got a thicker deck uh you can throw a lot more horsepower at them we have found that the cast motors are good for around you can make up to around a 1500 plus horsepower but how long do they last is another story um we went seven ones with a cast motor on june but we found there's obviously differences in blocks. Every block is a bit different. So you might get a good block, you get a bad block. And for us, it just become too much machine work and everything involved to make the good blocks work. You might as well spend the extra money and go to a bill of block and you've got that peace of mind. You can throw whatever you want at this. It's gonna take it. I haven't seen one of these before here. Really. No, this is actually the first, uh, first of its kind. We've been working with PRP. They've worked pretty hard at sort of developing a billet sump 
to incorporate the daily engineering pump as well. Internal scavengers, billet diff, which is all removable. This is a first of its type, which we're planning to run on June and really test it, so. That is, that, honestly, that's really well, because yeah, it's all, obviously it's all built in. Yes, every, everything's incorporated. In yeah, everything's incorporated. Then like I said, you've got your internal scavengers inside here. You've got your windage plates. So they all sort of clip in here. It's a pretty trick bit of gear. So this one, once the diff's built, will go on John's motor straight away, which is patiently waiting for it. So I mean, this is going to be a pretty big deal for taking this platform to the next level. Yes, a hundred, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. Yeah, the diff is a big thing for us, man. As soon as you put a bit too much drive, you can break the front diff. And as soon as you break a front diff, then you pretty much destroy your dry sump as well. It's one less thing to have to worry about. If you break that, or well, you break that and you at least you keep your pan. And then you've got all your internal scavengers, so that's a plus, it's less hoses and fittings, so yeah. it'll and keep uh, it all nice and neat. Is something that could technically also be run on like the street setups? Or? Yes, 100%. Um, we're very close to probably running one on, or we are gonna run one on June, and there's probably another one going on another pretty big street car as well. So we'll awesome. put it through its paces and make sure they do what they need to do. So I think this is a uh, exclusive here, TRC exclusive, right? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. No no one's seen, no one has seen this yet. You're I the first to see you, it. You guys surprised us. Yeah, so. you're the first to see this one, so yeah, awesome. um, should be pretty good. Can you give us time? Um, we want to have, have this in the car and back in June within the next couple of weeks. Wow. So that's okay, the plan. So it's happening. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, 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 it's happening. Right it's right well right. and truly happening. So awesome. there's a few little things which um, we got to modify to suit the bill of block, which we're in the process of getting it done with Herman. But yeah, once that's done, it'll be finished, ready to go. Can't wait to see it. We'll have so, to follow up you guys uh, by GTR yeah, Festival 100, time. 100%, yeah. 100%. Yeah. So, awesome. And so, you'll probably find there'll be a number of cars running it by then as well. Yeah. So. That's awesome. It's not only RVs in here, but I see a little bit of everything. I see two yeah. Js, a one J. Yeah, there's a, a one J. That's you a K series, two SR20s. Um, well. EJ, this motor's for a customer in Miami. We're just trying to sort a custom sump pan out for him. 3.2, 1J. 2.8, 2.8, another 3.2 there, and an EJ K20 and two SR20s. And there's a billet VR, which is in the process at the moment, just getting some more things done at the machine shop, and that's all happening there. So there are the heads for it over there. And that's actually for a GDIR, that motor there. So yeah, it's a lot happening in here. This is our dyno room. As you can see, it's got a big heavy door that you slide open. It's a very thick, thick room. Got yeah. both our dinos in here. So you get a bunch of airflow comes from the back there? Yeah, so we've got fresh air that comes in from above. So it sucks fresh air in and then blows all the exhaust fumes from there and sucks it out to a separate vent. So you got the uh, the hub dyno and then you got a chassis dyno? Yeah, we've got a four-wheel drive chassis dyno here. Um, and we've got our hub dyno for the bigger horsepower rear-wheel drive or four-wheel drive that we can flick over to rear-wheel drive to get the better tunes into them. So yeah, it's um, nice soundproof. We've had other dyno rooms before where it's just trying to get the control, the noise. Our main objective here was to sort of make it more comfortable for the workers so you can tune all day and not you know, have to wear earmuffs or earplugs to sort of yeah. hear each other. So you got some HKS bits here. This has a full HKS engine in a crate it's motor. It's like the two-step deal? Yeah, it's even got the HKS trigger kits, coils, everything, literally the whole catalog. Yeah, you, I haven't seen much of the like the, the Japanese stuff, right? Like yeah. HK stuff. It's a lot of it's been like RB30 or that's right, yeah. strokers and all that. So it's interesting how those have like really flooded the market and how much of you guys have developed those. Yes, correct. Um, but but yeah, it's cool. It's cool to see the JDM stuff here and there. Yeah, there is, and I think it's coming back a little. A lot of people are starting to restore the cars, trying to keep them as original or sure. old school Japanese with HKS or mainly HKS Nismo stuff. Yeah, is what people sort of are starting to do, Love which we're noticing now, and they're restoring from top to bottom with all Nismo parts or HKS parts. Uh, it's pretty cool. Man, thank you so much. Not I really problem. appreciate it. It's More than welcome. It's been an absolute blast. It's been a pleasure having you here. Yeah, hopefully we'll, uh, we'll see you guys real soon. Hopefully. Thanks. Thank you.